Hello everyone, welcome to the literary and jury charge portion of the 80 class. We're going to start off with some interesting facts with food and drinks. All right, here we go, ready? Diamond Jim Brady's average breakfast as recorded by a New York restaurant, a gallon of orange juice, three eggs, a quarter of a loaf of cornbread, sirloin steak with fried potatoes, grits and bacon, two muffins, and several pancakes. For dinner, Diamond Jim might eat three dozen oysters, two bowls of turtle soup, and six crabs as an appetizer. Restaurant owners referred to him as the best 25 customers they ever had. A raisin dropped in a glass of fresh champagne will bounce up and down continually from the bottom of the glass to the top. In medieval England beer, or excuse me, in medieval England, beer was often served with breakfast. The United States Department of Agriculture reports that the average American eats eight and a half pounds of pickles a year. Dill pickles are twice as popular as sweet. Cabbage is 91% water. Lettuce is the world's most popular green. The term cocktail was invented in Elmsford, New York. A barmaid named Betsy Flanagan decorated her establishment with the tail feathers of cocks. One day, a patron asked for one of those cocktails. She served him a drink with a feather in it. As many as 50 gallons of maple sap are needed to make a single gallon of maple sugar. Dairy products account for 29% of all food consumed in the United States. The Swedes drink more coffee than any other people in the world. Potato chips were invented by a black chef in Louisiana in 1865. Goat's milk is used more widely throughout the world than cow's milk. Wine tasters never drink the wine they taste. They sip it, swish it about, gargle it, and then spit it out. Swallowing wine is believed to dull the palate not to mention the brain. Wadakin and Matsuska beef raised in Japan are considered the two most tender kinds of beef in the world. The steers from which this meat is taken are isolated in totally dark stalls fed on beer and beer mash, and hand massaged by specially trained beef masseurs three times a day. Wine will spoil if exposed to light, hence tinted bottles. Chop suey was invented in the United States. Its creator was a Chinese dignitary visiting America in the 19th century, requested by American friends to prepare an authentic Chinese meal and not having the proper ingredients, 
the Chinese gentleman ordered his cook to collect all available foods, pour them into a large pot, and flavor the whole thing with soy sauce, which was still relatively new and exotic to the western side of the world, asked the name of this delicious concoction. The dignitary, spotting a pair of chopsticks lying near the bottle of the soy sauce, replied, chop soy through his heavy Chinese accent. This became chop suey. And so it has remained ever since. Milk is heavier than cream. According to the National Nutritional Sciences Department of Cornell University, the best temperature at which to preserve frozen foods is zero degrees Fahrenheit or negative 18 degrees Celsius. The purpose of the indentation at the bottom of a wine bottle is to strengthen the structure of the bottle and to trap the sediments in the wine. Vintage port takes 40 years to reach maturity. The average person ingests about one ton of food and drink each year. All right. Fun, interesting facts there. Moving right along, I have some closing arguments from a criminal case. All right, here we go. Ready? I'm going to read this at 80. No motive was ever introduced in this case. There is no reason given by Mr. Hunt because he hadn't thought that far. He didn't think he would be asked that question. Why in the world would you be in the back of the motel late at night, debris all around, just strolling there with Mr. McKinnon? Why, Mr. Hunt? Well, for no reason. Why in the world would two men be doing that at that point? There is no reason. That was the answer because it never happened. No one else saw Orlando Hunt at the back of the motel. Carrie Don Scott says, I didn't see him. You look at the diagram that Mr. Davis had all the witnesses positioning themselves on. You look at that diagram. You look how close Carrie Don Scott and Orlando Hunt would be at the time of the shooting. They would be looking into each other's eyes at the time of the shooting if they were there. Neither guy says he saw the other guy. Orlando Hunt got all the details wrong. Orlando Hunt is the guy who says the gun is black. Remember, Carrie Don Scott says the gun is silver in or and chrome. Orlando Hunt got the details wrong. Orlando Hunt 
is the guy who says that Crandall McKinnon pointed the gun straight up and down. Carrie Don Scott is the guy that says, no, no, did it in a special way. We call it gangster style, where you twist it to the one side. That's exactly what he said. Orlando Hunt is the guy who said he saw no one in the field. Not Carrie Dawn Scott, not Gina Lee, not Chester Norwood. He said he ran north and then west to Hathaway to his mother's house. If he did that, if he did that, he would have run right up the back of Chester Norwood and Gina Lee as they're going to the same direction. Orlando Hunt was the guy who said that he did not know if Gina Lee was a user of crack cocaine in January of 2014. Now think about that. A small lie? Think about that. Orlando Hunt is the man who said, Gina Lee, I don't know if she is a user of crack cocaine. I don't know. I've never seen her that way. On the 4th of January, she seemed normal to me. She didn't seem high to me. That's what he said. It's in the transcript. It's in your notes. Well, that's crazy. They had a child together. They knew each other for years. Everyone else in the world knew that Gina Lee was a terrible crack cocaine user. Gina Lee herself said she was a terrible crack cocaine user. She wasn't even shy about it. She said, I've been using crack cocaine 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for years before and after. But Orlando Hunt swore to you that he did not know that she used crack cocaine? Ladies and gentlemen, he lied right in front of you. Orlando Hunt was also the guy who said that he did not talk to Gina Lee and he said he was the guy that had no control over Gina Lee. Remember that? He had no control over Gina Lee. Oh, I do because of the child. Just because regarding that child, but not in any other way. I have no control over her. He swore to you also. He swore to you that he did not discuss his control with or over Gina Lee with Mr. Davis and Mr. Buchanan. Remember, he swore that to you, but you heard it 
on the tape. You heard it on the tape. Mr. Davis asked, Do you have any control over Gina now? Does she like listen to you? His answer, yep. Mr. Davis asked, because she's being real hard ass with you? He said, oh yeah, don't worry about it. Davis asked, now listen to this. Can you give her the word? You could do, Hunt said, I'm going to let her know. Davis said, okay, you let her know how to get in touch with her. I want to interview her. And can you get word to her somehow? Hunt said yes. Davis said, I don't want to mess with her if she cooperates with me. If she doesn't cooperate with me, I'll just grab her down there and she can lie. She hasn't been cooperative so far. You'll talk to her? And Hunt said yes. Davis said, I need to interview Gina Lee to have her come clean and say, yeah, I was lying on the prelim because I was scared and I was trying to support and whatever, whatever her trip was. So for Hunt to come in here and say he had no control over her, that it was never discussed, is a lie. And what do you think that word meant? Word. Give her the word. Orlando Hunt is also the guy that lied and boastfully told us that he lied to the defense investigator and also a small lie, but another one. He said that Crandall McKinnon the next day just appeared in his room. He was sleeping at two or three in the afternoon and all of a sudden Crandall McKinnon was at his doorway, no children, no wife, let him in. They didn't see him, but all of a sudden, he's just standing in the doorway, threatening him. It makes no sense. It's unbelievable. It did not happen. All right, so we'll stop there. There is more, but we're going to stop. I'm going to give you some Latin and French words, and then I will read you the paragraph. Okay, so you're going to hear ex delicto, mala prohibita, mea culpa, and sestui qui trust. Sestui qui trust. All right, here's your paragraph at 80. The beneficiary or person for whom property is held in trust is the sestui qui trust. Sestui qui trust means the beneficiary of a trust, a cause of action or a claim that is based upon or arises out of a tort is called ex delicto. 
ex delicto may be based on a civil wrong. Mala prohibita is a wrong which is committed that is not inherently illegal. Mala prohibita acts are forbidden by the laws of society. Ex delicto is based on matters arising from a tort. Malum prohibitum is singular. Mala prohibita is plural. Mea culpa means my fault or I am to blame. Mea culpa is heard in some Christian prayers. All right, so that concludes our literary and jury charge portion of the 80 class. Have a great day.